Hello, it's Kirsten Lee Belt. Come on in. It's Friday. Friday, you guys, like great TGIF. Yes. That means we're going to do testimonies tonight. I'm going to give you the testimonies of the week so that you can have encouragement and hope in your heart. Okay, so I'm going to double check. I don't have my hubby here right now to double check my everything that I'm doing to make sure that I'm good. So if you can hear me, just tell me that you can hear me and then I won't have to double check everything. And if you can't, then I'm about to find that out to be true. So hold on just a second. Let me double check. You to be true. So there we go. Okay, that one is good. All right. So how are you guys doing tonight? How is Friday for you guys? Did you have a good week? Are you excited that it's Friday? What are you doing this weekend? Tell me if you're on the replay. Tell me if uh, where you're coming in from. And if you think that you know somebody that needs to have some information on insulin resistance, share out the feed so that we can help more people. All right. It's so good to see you guys. This was a really good week. So if you're in the Facebook group, then you already know that we did tonight or this week, we did a five day challenge. Every month I do a five day challenge at the beginning of the month, towards the beginning of the month. Hold on, I'm gonna check one more. Perfect. And so we just finished up today. And we made a super yummy recipe because on the Friday of the of the challenge, that's what we get to do. And so that was really super yummy. The challenge went really well. If you ever need to feel like you need encouragement, you need some, you know, food ideas, etc. It's a good place to be. And in fact, I received this text today. This is not a testimony of uh, what I normally do, but I'm going to read this one because this was so encouraging um, because, you know, we talk about food, right? We talk about you know, eating grain free, sugar free and loving the food that you eat at the same time. Like you have to love it all at the same time. Hey, Christy. Oh, you're in Florida. So fun, right? I always just think I just, oh man, I just love Florida so much. We, every time we've gone to Florida, we have family in Florida. Every time we've gone to Florida, hey, good to see you. New Orleans, oh, brand new to the channel. That's awesome. Welcome. I'm in Minnesota. Can you hear my accent? I'm in Minnesota. Thank you for asking. That's so cool. You can hear, yep, that's excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, um, but just, oh, Christy, I just, every time we go to Florida, my family, we're so happy there. <laughs> We're just so happy. It's probably because I'm from Minnesota. Hey, Regina, good to see you. All right, I'm going to, you can hear me, so I'm good with that too. Okay, perfect. So what I wanted to do tonight was I wanted to talk about, um, I know I should come visit. You live five miles from the beach. Oy, the Atlantic or the, or the Gulf? I would love to know, where are you? The Atlantic or the Gulf? Man, we did, we flew into um, Orlando and then we did a day on each side the family did. And boy, did my, my boys have fun. They just absolutely adored the Atlantic. Okay. Oh, they had so much fun over there. Anyway, they did a lot of like, I don't know if they did actual body serve what they were doing. I'm not really sure. I just remember loving it very, very much. So anyway, um, so in talking about you're in Daytona, oh, making me jealous, Christy, you're making me jealous. Um, so in talking about insulin resistance, so, you know, if you are insulin resistant or you've wondered if you're insulin resistant or maybe you have been um, diagnosed with insulin resistance, finally Friday you can stay up late to watch. Oh, Julie. Yeah, don't take your magnesium yet, Julie. Don't take your melatonin. Hold on, hold on, girl. Don't take the gummies. Still struggling to get 150 grams of protein. I know. It can be challenging to get in your protein. It does. You know what? Anytime you're shifting things like this, you are learning um, a new language a little bit. So don't be too hard on yourself. It is, it can be challenging, right? The West Coast definitely has more beautiful beaches, but you still love it. Yeah, I'm sure. I don't blame you. Regina, you have PCOS. That's a connection for sure. Yep. Get got got you got to 100 grams a day. Good job. Good job. Eating more protein is literally like a weight loss hack, but it also helps you to maintain muscle mass. And it also helps you to um you feel fuller longer, you lose more weight, like it's super important. Most of the time, little tweaks like that are what can actually help you move the needle a little more. So the one thing that I had wanted to read um, that she had sent me was this. She said, um, so 
she had just texted me this and then she texted me more, but I won't go into her whole story, but she basically said that she's really struggled with doing keto in the past, but then she added in electrolytes. And I said, Oh man, I should really be talking about electrolytes more. Um, but she says that the recipes have helped so much that she has, um, she has yet. And I have somebody else that had did this too. She started making some dietary changes at the beginning of January. And then halfway through when she added in the supplementation, her weight started to just fall. Right. But she says, I haven't even tried this or started the supplements yet. And I've already lost seven and a half pounds. That's after three years, three years of slowly gaining while trying everything because my hormones went nuts after I got in my forties. And remember I talk about, I'm convinced that women are sliding into their forties. They are insulin resistant. They don't know it. And they can't lose weight because when your insulin or your sugars are high, you're stuck. So that's, that's what we talk about. So she said, she just wanted to thank me so much um, for everything that I teach in that realm, because that has helped her very, very much. I'm so excited about that. I just thought that was really sweet. That's actually not one of the testimonies, but Anyway, so what I wanted to talk about was um, talking about your goal is to make the bread tomorrow so that you have another good protein option. Yes, yes, and yes. Make Maria Emmerich bread. Um, and if you're in the group already, I have it pinned to the guides up at the top. And that is a very, very helpful because you can get an extra protein. And uh, maybe I should do a live on just protein and, and uh, talking about that. I think people do need ideas. Um, you know, <laughs> Julie, you're so sweet. Okay, so basically, um, you know, there are so many reasons why Christy, you're going to appreciate this. There are so many reasons why I just did a reel on it today. Um, why the scale fluctuates so much when we are specifically insulin resistant. So it may not be that way for somebody else, but then it may be for us and it can be really frustrating. And I feel like we're already on this hamster wheel because maybe we didn't already know that number one, insulin is a hormone. Number two, we didn't know that if your insulin is high or your sugars are high, you can't lose weight. Number three, three we might not know basic things like um, how to love your liver so that you can actually metabolize you know, fat and lose fat, um, things like that, right? And those are a lot of the things that we talk about in the group. But um, Basically, having said that, it's like, there are so many reasons I had to eventually. So when I decided to change out my foods, I did it kind of slowly. I wasn't the fastest one in the group to the top of anything. I, um, I wanted to assess myself as I was changing out my foods. And this is I'm 59. Now, I probably started when I was close to 51 changing out things. And at first, I kind of went more paleo, I had no idea what that meant. I didn't know any of my terminology. So I didn't know what that was. I but that's now looking back, that's what I was doing. I was ditching a lot of processed foods, etc. But I was still not getting you know, like, I was feeling really good, but I just didn't understand a lot of pieces. Um, and so during my whole journey of doing that, I eventually I eventually realized that I needed to get rid of the scale because it was impacting my, my emotional responses. And so I, I measured myself. And in fact, I think everybody should get a fabric measuring tape and have that on hand because if you can measure yourself and then have grace on yourself as you're going through the process, it'll, it'll serve you really, really well. So um, having said that, that's kind of where then I actually haven't had a scale for a long time, but I've already gone down three sizes. So that matters to me more than anything. And so I'm just telling you, that's kind of how that goes for me. So now the reel that I did tonight, um, and actually, if you're on my personal Facebook page, I don't think I put it on there, but it's on my business page. It's on my Instagram, blah, blah, blah. And talking about the different reasons why scale fluctuations might be happening specifically for somebody who is insulin resistant. Because we have a different deal. Once you're insulin resistant, you have to like take a different path in order to lose weight, in order to reduce inflammation, et cetera. So that's actually what I want to talk about tonight is inflammation in connection to insulin resistance because it's affecting your scale. So let's get into that for just a second. All right. So basically, this is what this is saying. So chronic low-grade inflammation is common in individuals 
with insulin resistance and metabolic syndrome. Inflammation can lead to fluid retention and shifts in body composition, influencing your scale weight fluctuations. And the reason why it's connected to insulin resistance is, overall, insulin resistance and inflammation create a vicious cycle where inflammation exacerbates insulin resistance and insulin resistance promotes inflammation. Chronic low-grade inflammation associated with insulin resistance contributes to the pathogenesis of various metabolic disorders, including type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, addressing inflammation through lifestyle modifications such as a healthy diet, regular exercise, stress management, and targeted interventions is essential for managing insulin resistance and reducing the risk of associated complications. So in talking about this, it's super interesting because I've always said which came first, the inflammation, you know, the chicken or the egg, the inflammation or the insulin resistance. And this really does kind of explain that for me a little bit about how really it's actually both. They're feeding off of each other. And when you have high insulin in your body, it's just creating high inflammation. But yet, on the other hand, you could be eating a ton of seed oils and really like, like, making your liver mad and then creating a lot of high inflammation from that and a bunch of other stuff, like a bunch of other toxic stuff that we do. So it's not just seed oils, but that's a, that's a main one. So Christy, the scale and I haven't been friends in years. I need to get rid of it because I definitely get frustrated with it because of the daily fluctuations. It's just, it's a mind game, man. It puts you into a mind game. And it's like, it's almost like when you, um, have you ever been on social media? Okay. You're on social media, but have you, hi, Anna, good to see you. Have you ever been on social media and all of a sudden you recognize that as you're scrolling, you kind of go, Ugh. and all of a sudden you go, why am I following this person? Like, not because you don't like the person, but maybe it's an influencer of some sort. Maybe it's a, who knows what kind of information they're putting out there. It could be anything. It could be something that just makes you, it could be something that, that like stirs you up or it makes you mad or um, it just, it triggers you in some way, but you're still following them because it hasn't really hit your head yet that you should unfollow them. Like, you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden you go, why am I doing this? Like, I'm going to unfollow. And then this just happened to me the other day. That's why I can talk about this. Because about maybe two weeks ago, I unfollowed somebody who's just a total influencer. But every time I just saw her stuff, it just, uh, I don't know what it was. It's she's a beautiful, wonderful person, had nothing to do with her. It was her content. And I unfollowed her. And I just realized this is like two days ago. I went, huh. I'm not feeling that uh, every like that's gone. Well, it's the same thing with the scale. So if every time you step on the scale, you're like holding your breath and you're like, then stop then just set it aside. And I know that even for myself, the first time that I put it away, the voices in my head said things like this. How will you ever possibly gauge what's going on? Are you fooling yourself? Is that a way to lie to yourself about how well you're doing or not doing? Um, it's the best way to gauge what you're what you're doing. Uh, those types of things were in my head when I put it away. And I know I'm not the only one that our minds play games with us. Am I? Am I the only one? I doubt I'm the only one. I would love to know. For you, when you eat too much sugar, your blood pressure increases a lot. Thankfully, your doctor acknowledges this to be a fact for people. And she tells me to just cut the sugar, Christy. <laughs> Yes. Cut the sugar, Christy. <laughs> You're so funny. Yes, that's always a good idea. I know it does. It matters. Yeah, I know. I'm not crazy. I, I, you know, what I had to do was I had to start listening to my gut more. And my gut was telling me, no, Kirsten, you are smart enough. And you are old enough to know how to assess your own body. Let's just try something different and see if it works. And I'm just saying that for me, and it's not requirement for any everybody, but I am saying that if you're insulin resistant and your weight is fluctuating for other reasons because of the insulin resistance, 
maybe it's good to put it away for a season and just measure yourself. Go buy your clothes. Go buy the sizes that you are. Go buy the the measuring tape and give yourself a freaking break because the mental games, the mental stress can just be too frustrating. That's you. Michelle says, that's you. The scale plays such mind games with me. Yep, it does. And it really, really can. So um, moving on with that whole inflammation piece, there were a couple of things that I thought that sounded really interesting. There's a lot of it that I don't like, like, you know, it's a little kind of above my head only in the sense that it's like um, just a lot of medical terminology that that doesn't really translate very well. But one of them was gut dysbiosis, alterations in the gut micro microbiota composition, so your microbiome, known as dysbiosis, are common in individuals with insulin resistance. Did you know that? That insulin resistance, you could have a messed up gut, maybe even more so than your neighbor that's sitting next to you and is not insulin resistant. Um, Dysbiosis can then lead to increased gut permeability, leaky gut, and translocation of bacterial products into the bloodstream, triggering an an inflammatory response. I thought that was super interesting. And there was another piece that I found very interesting. Um, This is one that has to do with, it's talking about as adipose tissue expands in obesity, it can become hypoxic, oxygen deprived. Due to inadequate blood supply, hypoxia in adipose tissue in in your fat stimulates the release of pro-inflammatory. Okay, this is where I don't I don't necessarily know. This is not the biology piece of my universe. I think I got a C in biology in high school, so you know it explains a few things. Pro-inflammatory cytokines and adipokines contributing to systemic inflammation. Point being that the when you have fat cells that are increasing in your body, that they are basically very pro- pro-inflammatory. And so that by itself, so maybe you need to stop being so hard on yourself. Maybe you need to stop beating yourself up over Um, I, you know, over the weekend, I went up five pounds, and then I went down two pounds, and then I went up three pounds, and I stop the insanity, because I feel like this is a far more complicated situation that's going on, than we're even understanding. And so inside of that, like I teach in the in the in the Facebook group, no shame, right? No shame. We switch out one ingredient at a time, one recipe at a time. We do not do it with shame because you can't heal a shamed body very well, right? And so you need to be able to like assess that and go, you know what? I'm just going to stop this insanity. If I have inflammation for many different reasons, and that's only one of the reasons that I might have weight fluctuation, that's literally only one. Then why are we basing everything and, and you know on um, that one dimension of weighing ourselves on a scale when that is probably, in our case, in my opinion, the absolute least effective way to determine how we're doing and where we're going. So, I just say all of that just to say that, you know, it's like, let's like free ourselves up a little bit, right? Because it doesn't help us at all. So um, Sarah, yes. Hi, Sarah. Yes. And energy levels. Yes, yes, and yes. So Christy, you've been researching so much on the gut. It's our second brain. Yes. It also plays a huge role in our mental stability. Yes, yes. Anxiety. Yes, yes, yes. Depression. Yes, 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 yes. It's a very interesting. It's the second brain. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you, mm-hmm. it's very interesting when you start diving into the gut. It really, really is. And actually, so those are the two things that I kind of, I'm going to give you the testimonies for the week because that's what we do on Friday. But I am going to give you two recommendations. And if you want to know about them, you can either put gut health in the comments. Oh, Instagram. I always have to clarify this for you. It will go away. When I post my video, I won't be able to see your comments. So you have to DM me or you can come back to the video and you can put it there. Okay. So 
That's my disclaimer for Instagram. Put gut health, if you would like to know, a really excellent probiotic. That has, it's powder, it's convenient, it has five strains, and it has a prebiotic. And if you don't know about, about doing that, about having a prebiotic with your probiotic so that you can set your gut so that you can actually get it to work, that's something that's worth noting. Um, my husband even recently has really upped his game on his probiotic and it's helping to change his skin because that's another piece of the puzzle. And then number two, when we talk about inflammation and you guys all know, like you can always, um, you can always put list in the comments and I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll tell you where to go to, to read my list of, of supplements that I've used for insulin resistance and, and et cetera. But on that list is interestingly enough, because we're talking about inflammation, it's a turmeric blend. But see, this is the deal. Did you know that turmeric is actually not that bioavailable? See, now I did not know that. And so in order to get it to be like absorbable into your system so that it can actually take down the inflammation, it has to be done right. So the line that I work with, you know, when they talk about their turmeric, they'll tell you, and they don't make claims lately, but they'll tell you, it's actually 45 times, like you have to wrap your brain around this. Just think about this for a second. 45 times more available than what you would find in the store than other brands. So it's like when you take 400 milligrams of their turmeric, 400, do the math now, 400, it's like taking 6,000 milligrams of another brand. So if you're really looking to actually bring down inflammation in that way, the beautiful piece of that all is the fact that it is mixed with fenugreek. And so the blend together is like, Mwah, because then the fenugreek helps with sugars. So it's like a win, 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 win. So anyway, so you can either put like gut health or uh, go ahead and put turmeric if you want to know about the turmeric, but now let's get to the, let's get to the, um, let's get to the testimonies. All right, Anna, if you're still on here, I'm going to give your testimony. So Anna was on the live the other day. I think it was on Wednesday. And so she was talking to me about this. And what I do is I, I grab testimonies that are coming to me um, from my own customers, like for the last week, because I feel like I want more than anything in my heart for people who are insulin resistant, you might even be type two. And on Instagram, you have the benefit. You can go to my highlight bubble at the top of my page. And there are testimonies in there. Um, this doesn't have to be rocket science. We know, we all know, and I'm the only one in my family that, that avoided type two. Um, but we all know that when you go to a, uh, a medical place, that the answer that you're going to get is either meds or more dose of whatever you're taking. And that gets really frustrating. And I know that that's why I end up with so many DMs from people going, I knew something was wrong with my body. I knew that I didn't want to go a certain route, blah, 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 blah. I don't like the side effects. I need to switch this, whatever, right? Well, I know that a lot of times that we have been really indoctrinated to believe that, you know, maybe we can't be our own advocate or that we can't do simple things to change things. And that's just, that's not true. Sometimes it's really simple. Sometimes we're talking about like nutritional deficiencies, like shift that little like thing on your, on the train tracks, you know, when you shift the lever. And that's what we talk about a lot actually in the group. But anyway, so the first testimony is, so, and I think Anna, you did blood work this morning. You can't wait for your results. Yes. I <coughs> can't wait for your results too. Did you start the trio, Anna, in December? I think she did. So she, so the trio are three supplements that have three ingredients that help with insulin uh, sensitivity. <clears throat> and I started using them 13 years ago. <laughs> Not only did they change the way Oh, uh, where is this on your Instagram? Yep. In my Instagram, go to my profile and there is my website is right there for you. And yes, it's on there. It's on the second button. 
So you can go look at that. It's really, it's an amazing, the testimonies coming off of that are so good. Um, but I do want to say this then, if because if you're going to jump, just make sure that you register with your name because then you can actually get check the box for the perks and get points for your products. Like get money off of future orders. Like do that. Don't miss out on stuff like that. Okay. Um, so I think you started in December. Yep, she did. And she's lost. Okay. The weight that she's lost is important. Don't get me wrong. Because we all want to hear about the weight. But the second part is the most important. But the first part is that she's lost 10 pounds. Yay. And again, viewing everything through insulin resistance, telling you if your insulin or your sugars are high, you can't lose weight. This is a key. This is a key for somebody who's insulin resistant. That, that's why this helps. But the second part of her testimony is that her morning sugars, which can be the hardest ones to get to come under control, they've gone from 190 down to 85. That is stunning. That is amazing. And they stay that way all day, she says. Now, she has been an amazing student. Um, oh, you love them. Took the sugars down to 85, 90 in the morning. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. I know, Christy, right? I know, I know, I know. I know, Sarah. That's why I love talking to people about actual blood sugars because there are so many people, I did not see this in my mind's eye, I'm going to be really honest. I knew that I wanted to talk to women right in their 40s who were um, who were insulin resistant and having a hard time losing weight. Like this, I understood that that's what my key was to unlock. Um, and because I'm the only one that avoided type two, I thought, well, I can't really talk about type two then because I didn't, I never had it, right? Like that made me feel unqualified. But the best testimonies that I'm getting, they went on and bought it themselves. And then they send me the testimonies and I'm like, that's stunning. And um, as a nurse, you don't believe that you don't, as a nurse, you say, I don't believe my patient's glucose drops that much with insulin. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and that's what gets me. That's why I'm so interested in this whole process and I just keep on studying and I just keep on studying because to me, it's like super duper fascinating. Um, because when you talk about being able to bring down those morning sugars, let's say, uh, that's that dawn phenomenon. When you, when you, when I started to get testimonies like this, it was people who are already on meds. So remember my story, if you don't, I'll just tell it to you quickly. My dad was an insulin dependent type two diabetic and he died at 63. So when he died, he had this lazy Susan full of medication on the kitchen counter. And there was a part of me that wanted to know why was he on all of these meds and now he's still gone? Like weren't the medications, I say this a lot. And so I, if you've heard it a lot, I apologize, but it's just the truth. Why didn't they heal him? Why didn't they turn anything around? Why didn't they fix anything? And, and I soon realized that that's not what it's meant to do. However, if you are dealing with a nutritional deficiency and you fill that gap, it can, your body was literally created to heal. And God gave us the answers. This is why it's so stunning to me. Same as your dad, Sarah. The dawn phenomenon is difficult to understand when it's happening to you. Yep. But that's one of the best testimonies. And that's not even the one I'm going to share tonight. But she, um, type 2 diabetic, on meds, could not start to lose weight until she um, started the trio. The trio are the three, the three supplements with the three ingredients. Um, and you know what? I do know that um, one of them is um, sold out. So um, that's always, a you know, I mean, it's, it's a popular product, right? Sold out. And um, 
I will let people know when it's back in for sure. But don't let that stop you. Don't let that stop you from, you know, grabbing the other two or or adding to your list of things. I mean, I, I lay out like why there are why certain um, supplements actually help with insulin resistance. I want people to understand why filling in these nutritional gaps can be so helpful to you. Like sometimes we just have a cupboard full of supplements and we don't know what they do. And so then we eventually just stop taking them or maybe we think that they don't, you know, like whatever, I'll just get them at the mart or I'll just get them at the drugstore. And I don't know if they're working out. And all of a sudden, if you understand why they're literally helping you, you're more prone to continue with your routine. You're more prone to say, oh, I understand why that, you know, that vit what that vitamin D does. I understand what that, insul that fish oil does for my insulin resistance. Not just in general, because you hear it being advertised, you know, on wherever. While some medications are necessary, most are just to keep you sick and line the pockets of those that make money from keeping people sick. That is correct. And that was really good of you, Julie, to not use the PH word. <laughs> the big PH. That was very good. <laughs> because it's, right, yeah, censorship is real. Um Yes, don't let it stop you. The trio is life giving. Sarah, you're amazing. Carol, I know. Hey, Carol's Carol's saying amen to you over here, Julie. Okay, so here's the uh, so that was testimony number one. Let me give you testimony number two. Okay, here we go. So I asked a customer how she was doing, and this is what she said: um, "I'm doing great!" Exclamation point. I've been feeling pretty good. It's about a month and a week since being on the trio and I am feeling great. I've noticed the bloating has gone down and so have the cravings. Um, wait a second. Is this the one? I mean, it is, but no, this is a different one. Hold on just a second. I apologize. Maybe that, is that the one? Uno momento. Por favor, hold on. I should have put it in an album. Oh, this is it. This is it. Okay, this is it. So I open up my 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 text. This is on the 5th of March. So whatever, however many days ago, just a couple of days ago. She says, you're not going to believe this. After carefully eating keto and intermittent fasting and not being able to lose even one pound for three years, but only going up in weight, I lost 10 pounds with these supplements. I can't contribute the weight loss to anything else. I even went on a cruise and ate some carbs and I still lost weight. Unbelievable. I'm taking all three of the trio. Isn't that amazing? You guys just have hope. Understand that if you can view things through a different lens, like put on a different set of glasses, because you know what? All of that marketing about all of that, like here's that, you know, that the here's your prepackaged food program, which is horrible for you. All of that inflammation. If you're going to add that much more inflammation into your body, that's not going to work, right? Or it might work short term. Um, if you're just only going to count points. That could work for a season, but maybe that's not working for you anymore. And you're like, geez, Louise, you know, right? Or calorie deficit. And then you're not paying any attention to protein. Like, don't do that to yourself because then you're really, really frustrated and you don't want to do that. <laughs> Sarah, you're amazing. She says, it's a great challenge to have that I can't find the right testimony. <laughs> Life's changing. I know, I know, I know. It's totally God, right? I know. Praise God. You're so fun. Yeah. I mean, I'm just telling you, like, we have been given some answers that are super, super simplistic. We really, really have. So anyway, um, you know, those are the testimonies for the week. I wanted to talk about inflammation. You could, you know, depending upon kind of what you want, either put list in the comments if you just want to know like me to explain where you find the whole list you have to wait until i post the video instagram or dm me um if you want just the turmeric put turmeric and if you want the probiotic put gut health and i can get you i'll steer you different directions according to what you're looking for but um you know what you can have your body function at a completely different level and you can be in a different spot completely by the end of 2024 like you, yes, 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 you do have to admit, admit and acknowledge that it's a healing journey 
that this doesn't get fixed overnight. I would never tell somebody, oh man, you know, you can have your insulin resistance done by next week. No, that's not how this works. And there are some people who get on their healing journey and they don't lose all the weight right away. That does happen, you know, and it's, you just have to accept the fact that you're going to take yourself on your own journey and you're going to assess your own triggers so that you can actually find a replacement for them and never go back. It's totally possible because you can rewrite anything you want to rewrite inside of yourself. And that's really important to know. The person that you used to be. Oh, yeah, Julie. Oh, she's talking about Oprah. Yep. Isn't a part of the points company anymore. She stepped down. Interesting. I didn't even know that. I have not really followed her a ton with that, to be really honest. Um, yeah. And Carol's saying it's more about her health. And Christy says she's going to go in a different place, be in a different place by the end of this year. Yes. See yourself. So as a little side note, it's like being in business for um, the years that I've been in business and we've learned a lot about, you know, um, being able to really see things and vision things and have vision boards and, and to really um, like stop having stinking thinking and stuff like that. That applies to every area of your life. And the truth is, is that if you can take a moment every single day and just visualize yourself at the end of the year with, you know, you're feeling better, you're, you have less inflammation, your weight is dropping off, you're, um, you're not waking up and feeling so crappy anymore. Uh, maybe for, for me, I always give this example, but for me, I get to get down on the floor with my grandkids and I don't ache. Like these are things that are super important to me. You have to determine what they are for you and then visualize yourself in that way. And just know that you have everything that it takes. All of those voices that are telling you that you can't do it. You've never been able to do it before. You know, um, you don't have any willpower. What are you even thinking? All of that kind of crap. You don't even have to deal with that anymore. Well, I mean, you have to make it go away, but I'm just saying, Tell yourself that you don't have to deal with that anymore because it has nothing to do with willpower. Wrap your head around that. What if it has to do with, oh, I just needed to put on a different pair of glasses so that I could make my body function better, just like a car, just like an engine of any sort. I can actually make that happen. And uh, one of the, one of the most, amen, it's not about willpower, Christy says. Anna says she's only five pounds away from her goal weight. Yes! Good job! Christy, finally going to heal yeah, from this insulin resistance. Unfortunately, I've had this for many, many years and you didn't know it. Well, uh, that's another conversation, right? Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. You lost 51 pounds, way less inflammation. Yes. Good job. Oh, you started the, Michelle says she started the trio in January. She lost eight pounds and is averaging eight hours of sleep nightly. Hallelujah. Oh, I love that so much. That is so good. Yay, Michelle. Oh, I love that. Are you in the group, Michelle? You should put that in the group. Uh, give that testimony in the group. Like just post it. That is so good. Dang. Because that's what it matters. That's what matters is that you. It matters for you to have hope that something can actually change. I will send you information. Oh, how do you say your name? Yazenia. Yazenia Gonzalez. That is a beautiful name. Very beautiful. I will, when I jump off, I will send you some information so that you can grab that or so you can look at it. You're welcome, Anna. So Miriam, always striving to be healthier, gave up sugar and processed foods a few months ago. Yes. You feel better in your A1C and your glucose is in normal range. Wow. Not losing weight, which is frustrating. You're ordering the trio tonight. Yeah, I know. I know. And it, it's just, um, it's, and there's a, just another level that's involved, right? When you're able to really bring down your insulin and your 
glucose. It really, it's just a different level, your sugars. And uh, that's what really kind of just kind of releases things. And, you know, anyway, uh, so like I said, I do know that one of them is sold out because <laughs> that happens. It happens. I'm going to check it right now just to see, depending upon where you live in the country. And so um, I will check it for you right now. I check this about 100 times a day. I have so many people that are waiting and I want to make sure that you guys get you guys get to be the first to know that when it's all back, I will come live and tell people. I'm serious. I'll come and I'll come and tell you guys so that you know, um, because I do know that people are um, really just getting some amazing results. Anyway, does anybody have any questions or anything before I jump off tonight or any more testimonies? You guys are so good. And if you're in the group, post your testimony in the group because I would love that. It's going to come back soon. You can feel it. Wait a second. What's going to come back, Christy? What are you saying? What are you saying? Got to see my. Oh, so you were talking about insulin resistance. I want to say that early sunlight walking twice a day. Sugar normal. Stay away from folate, please. Okay, good to know. Insulin. So your insulin can be high for years before it shows up in your blood glucose. No, Carol, it's the glucose. It's the glucose. Um, and that's the problem. So not that. I started my insulin resistance in my 20s. I was gestational diabetic with my first baby. I was hypoglycemic with my second baby. And I didn't do anything about my insulin resistance until I was in my 40s. Because I never made the connection. I mean, I just was living my life. I just was like, do, 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 do. And wasn't piecing things together. I was a little indoctrinated to believe that type two was genetic and that it is what it is. Case sera, sera. Total, totally not true at all. Um, and um, this is all reversible. I'm not a doctor, so you have to assess yourself, of course. Um, but it's totally reversible. And so this is why I teach both targeted supplementation. And then on the other side, I teach food because I want people to know how to fix it, to be, fix what got them into the pickle to begin with. But like I said, my insulin resistance started really, really like almost 20 years before I ever did anything about it. So because your insulin, your, your pancreas is just so wonderfully made, it's going to keep on releasing insulin to try to get the fuel into your cell. And that's why you end up with high insulin and it starts to store all that extra fuel for fat. And then you have a lot of inflammation in your body. And that can be going on for a very, very, very long time as a hormone before your blood glucose levels rise and stay. So when you go to the doctor and you get a blood glucose test and they say your, your numbers are normal, there's nothing wrong with you. And then the next day you go back and they go, oh, you're pre-diabetic. And it seems like it happened overnight. It didn't. That's the kicker of this whole thing. That's why it's so frustrating. And then we are walking around going, I just know something's not right. I just, I just know that there is a, there's a key here somewhere. I'm looking, I'm looking, where is that? There's something out there that I'm missing. I'm missing something in the conversation. And that's what it is. That's what it is. Yes. Thyroid. Yes. Thyroid is very helped with zinc, selenium, and copper. That's what, you know, that's just it. You know, it's like, We don't even realize these simple little deficiencies can change things. And then with thyroid hormone, T4 is converted into T3 in the liver. So really, it's not your thyroid, it's your liver, according to Maria Emmerich anyway. Did I exercise when I started? Seems like I started exercise program and my weight loss stall. So confusing. Yes, Michelle, that's actually super, super common. So depending upon your exercise program, and I am not a fitness guru at all. Um, however, what happens is because all of your hormones are in cahoots with each other. And so cortisol is a hormone and insulin is a hormone. Insulin is going to be storing your fat. Just It's just on it all the time. Just can't wait to store everything as fat. And your cortisol is, is like just like sisters to your insulin. And so, which is your stress hormone, right? So if your stress is up, then what's happening is you're storing more fat, 
around your belly, all of these things. So cortisol plays a really big piece in stalling out weight loss. So depending upon what you're doing, like if you were doing, um, let's say you're doing uh, toning and you're just doing some minor like lifting weights, et cetera, that seems to be fine, right? Because you're building muscle and muscle burns fat, but it's when anybody's doing hardcore, especially when you hit perimenopause and you go into menopause, that's where you really want to not be making your cortisol mad. Like tough training, like high intensity um, can really be, if your cortisol is already on the edge, it's kind of like when you have allergies and your histamines are up there and then you you walk just even close to a flower that you're allergic to and they kind of like tip over the edge. It's kind of, this is how I see things in my own brain. This is not like medical advice. <laughs> I'm sure you could understand that, but I'm just saying it's almost like, you know, your, um, like your cortisol is right there on the edge and you go and you do a high intensity workout or something like that, or maybe running or something. And it just tips it right over the edge. And so it does stall. And that is very common. And the more that I study that, the more interesting that that is, that people, I hear people now saying that to me. So the answer, Michelle, is that no, I didn't start exercising with that. I was on my feet a lot in my job, but I was not exercising. And um, now at 59, the kind of exercise that I would rather do now is like, um, I'm going to learn how to play pickleball. And so I have pickleball paddles. And um, I also, I want to do more resistance training, like like toning and, and lifting to get my muscles. I want muscles. That's why so much protein, um, high protein so that you can have strong muscles so that you can have good stability. Um, and then of course, that's going to help with everything. Like maintain your lean muscle mass as a female is like a superpower. This is what we want. And so anyway, I hope that answers that. But I, and of course, I don't know what you've been doing, but, and I'm not a, um, like a trainer. So 30 minutes of walking, 30 grams of protein, and 30 minutes of high intensity walking takes fat off better than running on coffee as, yep, resistance training, yep. Yeah, resistance training. It's just really interesting to me. You know, I took care of my mom who had dementia for five years. And so really knowing that age range, and, you know, it gets to a certain point in your life that if you fall and break something, that anesthesia can be really hard on your body. Your body can't process it anymore. Or if you get super like up in years, they just might not fix it like the same way because they can't. So now she was 94. So I'm talking about being very older. But my point being that, um, you know, you definitely want to have stability. You want to have um, your muscles going for you, right? So Sarah says she was taught uh, protein amount should be at your goal weight minimum each day. Yeah, that's pretty much what I've been taught to now. So if someone wanted to be 150, they would need a minimum of 150 grams of protein. That is exactly what I have heard. Charlie horses. Um, you know what, Carol? It sounds like, are you eating pretty um, keto? Yep. So let's talk about protein for just a second, since you guys are really on that conversation. Um, I think I missed one up here. Okay, so that's what you asked, Carol. Okay. Okay. And Chris, uh, Miriam, Christy, I have no clue. Just went for blood work after fasting. Had A1C checked after being pre-diabetic. Doctor said I'm not anymore. Miriam, that's fantastic. God, that's such a celebration. I'm not familiar with this. Okay, yep. Oh, you're not. Okay, got it. Okay, so talking about protein and how to get in protein. So there are a few different things that people can do. And, um, you know, the reason why I teach the Maria Emmerich bread, the egg white protein powder bread, and the sugar-free chocolate pudding, which is made with egg whites, you would never know it. Amazing recipes. But a reason why I do that is because they are high protein. And so you could feed those to your children. You could feed, you could be eating those for yourself and be happy as a clam that you're eating homemade chocolate pudding and you're getting in a ton of protein at the same time. There are other things that you can do when you are on 
Um, for any of you that jump on my website, look up, put in the um, put in the search bar pods, P-O-D-S. They are protein pods that are sweetened with stevia and really amazing ingredients, really good ingredients. Chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. I'll take a half of a pod. They're in a vegetable casing. So it's um, for convenience that you could put in like eight ounces of liquid, like unsweetened almond milk or unsweetened coconut milk and shake it up and it will dissolve. I'll open it up and take half of one and add it to like cottage cheese, full fat cottage cheese. Remember the more skim you go, the higher the carbs and the sugars. The more full fat you go, the less carbs and sugars. So just think about the fact that they told us to go low, low fat. Okay, moving right along. So you can use protein like that in like make things for yourself that you like, that you think is great, right? I've been thinking about getting a Ninja Creamy. I don't know if anybody has one, but then you can make, I could use those pods and make, um, I was talking about this with my son. He bought a Ninja Creamy um, like last fall. And we were talking about taking those pods and turning them into ice cream, right? Anyway, um, and so I probably will do that. And then you can have, you know, whatever. You're upping your protein. Another thing would be using full fat plain Greek yogurt or at least high, you know, sometimes people will say like fa yay, the 5% is too thick for them. But if you use a, um, if you use a Greek yogurt, that's plain, then you can sweeten it yourself and you can buy because that's high in protein. And if it's plain, then you don't have to deal with any of their sugar and, and any of their crap. And you can take like a caramel liquid stevia and squirt it in there and mix that in. And you can get really good protein out of high fat Greek yogurt. So now those are both kind of dairy options and sometimes too much dairy can stall your weight. So you have to play around with that for yourself. But you could also do like um, Costco has these organic beef sticks that are, they're, they're really long. They're probably about a buck a piece. Having a good ingredient, gotta read your, I mean, honestly, between beef jerky, beef sticks, the ingredient list is super sketch, super junky. You have to find the good things. And so like Costco has these are like maybe a buck and a quarter a piece, really something good to have on you that you could grab. Hard boiled eggs would be another great idea to have in your refrigerator ready to go at the drop of a hat that you could grab, you know, hard boiled eggs. An egg has like six grams of protein. So and then when you do make eggs in the morning, don't just have two eggs, have four get 24 grams of protein, get more. We've been very indoctrinated to think a certain way. But that's because if you think about it, you go to a cafe. And then what you're doing is you're having your eggs and they're you're filling in your your breakfast with pancakes. So forget the pancakes and eat the eggs as many as you can, right? Um, so Kayla, magnesium, yep, Celtic salt and a ton of water will definitely help. Thank you, Kayla. The Charlie horse, I apologize for not answering that because I was asked, I asked you the question and then I didn't look for the answer. So thank you, Kayla, you are on it. So basically, um, when it comes to Charlie horses or any cramps, if you are if you are eating keto, you need electrolytes. And very specifically, go grab a good magnesium. I just ordered one actually off of walmart.com because it's a glycinate blend. And if I love it, I'll tell you about it, right? Because I want you guys to know how to introduce magnesium into your world so that you are not having Charlie horses, so that you are not, you know, uh, so that you can have help with your sleep. Magnesium glycinate just happens to be really absorbable for your body. And it can actually be really calming as well. So if you feel like you sometimes borderline have anxiety, glycinate can really help. Just to tell you, just as an FYI, pasture raised eggs are best options. Yes, I love, so my daughter has hooked me up with a local person for um, farm fresh eggs, makes me super happy. Yep, another good idea, a pinch of Redmond, see, uh, real salt in your water. Yes, a lot of beef sticks have corn syrup in them. Yes, they do. Oh, grits. No, <laughs> no, Christine. No, <laughs> you Southerner, you. You're so funny. You have an ice cream machine. Yes. Ugh. 
You eat plain Greek yogurt that has 10 grams per serving. I wonder, look at Faye, F-A-G-E. I think you can get higher. You can get higher than that. Yes, always full fat. Yep. Well, Carol, that just might, that might be why you're having Charlie horses. That's why I asked that. Your son has chickens and their eggs are fabulous. Oh, that's so good. Literally, these are like, um, if you just think about how God gave us food and how the most nutritious food is the most untouched food. So for us to vilify beef, it is such a joke. Beef is so nutritious. Literally, beef is like a superfood. It is so nutritionally dense and it has an amino acid profile that's almost identical to your human muscle. Like, hello, replenishing what's going on in your body. It's very dense. Or vilifying eggs and telling you to only eat the egg whites. That's marketing just becoming wicked is what that is. Now, I'm not saying you don't make things with egg whites. I do it all the time when it comes to the pudding and the bread. But it's the yolk that has all of the... Uh, you know, all of like the choline and all of your omegas and like, hello, this girl from Alabama needs her grits. I'm going to tell you something, Christy. I'll bet you anything that Maria Emmerich has a, has a faux grits answer for you. And I'll bet it has to do with, okay, let me think about this for just a second. She has a rice recipe that's not rice. And it's made out of, it's, it's a special way to do it. And I haven't done it yet. So just know that I know about it, but I just haven't tried it yet. But it has to do with using egg whites and some gelatin. And then she's making it some, and then she's putting it through a ricer. She's doing something and people are raving about it right now. I've just been hearing about it. But I'll bet you anything that you could do something similar. Um, and there are corn extracts that you can get because grits are corn, right? Yes, Anna, the uh, women's pack, it does have magnesium in it. It does. But if you're looking for an extra magnesium, like for sleep or anxiety or cramps, or because when you're low, when you are keto, you need your electrolytes, you need your magnesium, you need things to really keep your body running. But you are right. It's in the women's pack. You've got that, don't you? Um, your husband says never, says, says no to me, except he says no to chicken. Oh, yes. Well, I know. My dolly is the best. Yes, she is, Sarah. I had to say that. My dolly is the best, Kayla. Wow, that explains it. You're out. Yep. Get your magnesium. I'm telling you, it'll change everything for you. having a hard time seeing all the comments. What beef gelatin do I use? Julie, are you, do you, I use the one from, um, oh, sorry. Oh, look at there. I oh, I can do that on my stream yard. Oh, I'm totally going to do that. Oh, that is so cool. I forgot I could do that. I'm so glad I just made that mistake. Um, I actually buy mine off of Thrive Market and I do have a link for that too on my, in my, on my website. But that's an annual subscription. Um, I don't know where else to get beef gelatin. Probably, though, you can get it off of Amazon. Knox gelatin is a pork gelatin. You can get that probably just at Walmart. Well, I know you can. Um, but I use I get a big bag of beef gelatin off of Thrive. And I get all of my sweeteners there. And I get a bunch of stuff off of there because I really like their variety and their prices. Okay, so they are corn. Okay, so I'm, we shouldn't just sit on here forever, you guys, but we're having too much fun. It's Friday night, right? So let me just see. I'm going to look up on her website just to see what she's got. So she literally has Cheeto, cheesy keto grits. I'm just going to see how she makes hers. Okay, so she's using a cauliflower rice or a miracle rice. This might be an old um recipe butter black pepper garlic cheddar eggs so she's taking raw cauliflower and putting it in a food processor and pulsing it until they're really small pieces of rice 
And then she's putting it in a saucepan, adding butter, salt, pepper, garlic, and cheese, stirring until the butter and cheese are melted, and then lightly beating the eggs in a small bowl, then stirring it into the grits. So that's one way to try it. Her rest, her, um, I'll send you this, Christy. Let's just see if you like this. See if I can find a way to send this. Hmm. I'll have to look at this when I get off. I'm not sure why it's. Here we go. I'll send it to you in Messenger, and then you decide if this is even remotely exciting to you. And again, there are probably many other recipes out there because people are becoming so incredibly creative. Um, and Maria Emmerich is one of them. She's just very creative with ingredient trade outs. You got me at butter. <laughs> butter is good for you. Butter's good. Butter's good. Never say never to chickens. You know, my daughter, she had chickens for eggs, but I think butchering chickens is a whole nother. You just got it. Okay, good. That's, I think that's a whole nother like universe, right? Having, having meat chickens that this is just annoying tonight. Um, for butchering, that's a whole nother ball game, isn't it? I think it is. So anyway, this the current, you love butter too. <laughs> I know. However, you're not a grits girl. I'm going to be honest. I have never tried grits. I have no idea what grits taste like, but I just know. Meat chickens are a different breed of chicken and is a different process for sure. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. They would end up being your babies. <laughs> I know it's hard to butcher things that you fall in love with, isn't it? It's very, it's hard. I mean, we had, when we, my kids were growing up, we had, um, we would have like a cow and then we'd have to butcher the cow. And I know my kids love that. No, they didn't. And we even had a cow that would um, join us at our bonfires. Our bonfire was, we were out on 20 acres and it was right by the fence and uh, she would come and join us. So that's kind of how that goes. But anyway. All right. Well, if you guys need anything at all, my DMs are always open. And if you, you know, I, I think, let's see, what did I say? Um, if you just kind of want to know, like, how to see my site and look at the list, you can put list in the comments. You have to wait Instagram until I've <laughs> either DM me or put it after I've posted the video. Um, if you want to know about the turmeric that I was talking about, that's super absorbable for your system. And it's mixed with fenugreek that would help with sugars too. You can put um, turmeric or if you need gut health, I'll let you know about the probiotic. And um, oh, you are so welcome. You are so welcome. And you know what? Uh, if anybody goes on and orders, please just register with your name if you're a brand new customer so that you can check the box for the perks. Because if you can get the perks, you can get points for your products. And I do tell girls like, listen, rack up your points because then you can like cash them in and use them for like one of my favorite products is the vitamin C HA3 facial. Like it's so amazing. And so like treat yourself, reward yourself as you go throughout the year. And don't forget, we'll have another challenge starting in April. And what we'll be able to do then is um, we have a challenge at the beginning of the month. And then we just conquer that month. So right now we just ended a challenge in March and now we're going to like take down March. Okay. And then we'll start, we'll do it again in April and we'll take down April. And then you just kind of piece it together as you go. And pretty soon it's the end of the year. You've made progress. You've lost weight. You feel better. And that's how this can go. It's literally like the compound effect. If you've never read that book, it's a really good book. So, oh, it's so good to see you, Sarah. You're amazing. Not me, you. You're amazing. So anyway, have a really good night, you guys. And again, if you need anything, just let me know. All right. Good night, Michelle. And yeah.
Good testimony. Thank you for sharing that tonight. I appreciate you very, very much. All right. Yep. You are welcome, Christy. Let's do it. Let's do it. You're getting serious with this. No more grits. Good girl. Let's try a, an alternative and see if we can't figure it out. And look up corn extract. You never know. So, all right. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Good night.